ಚಕ್ರತುಂಡಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿಸಮಪ್ರಭ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮೇ ದೇವ ಸರ್ವಕಾರ್ಯು ಸರ್ವದ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ನಮಸ್ತುಭ್ಯ ವರದೆ ಕಾಮಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾರಂಭಂ ಕರಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸಿದ್ಧೇ ಸದಾ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ದಯಾನಂದ ಪರಮಾರ್ಥಸ್ವೂಪಿಣ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರಶಾಸ್ತಾರ ಪ್ರಣತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಪರಂ ಪದ ವಾಗರ್ಥಾವಿವ ಸಂಪೃಕ್ತ ವಾಗರ್ತ ಪ್ರತಿಪತ್ತ ಜಗತ್ ಪಿತರೋ ವಂದೇ ಪಾರ್ವತೀ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರ ಯೇನಾಕ್ಷರ ಸಮಗಮ್ಯ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಕೃತ್ಸ್ನ ವ್ಯಾಕರಣ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಪಾಣಿನಯೇ ನಮಃ ವಾಕ್ಯಕಾರ ವರರುಚಿ ಭಾಷ್ಯಕಾರ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಪಾಣಿನಿ ಸೂತ್ರಕಾರ ಪ್ರಣತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಮುನಿ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರ ವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತುಮಾವಿತ್ಷಾವಹೈ In the last class, we saw the we saw a brief introduction to sanskritam and we saw the word the word is sanskritam not sanskrit the word sanskritam is derived from the words sam and kritam it is derived from the verbal root kr and with the prefix sam and a suffix is added to the verbal root kr sam plus kr plus <coughs> the suffix it is the word sanskritam it means sanskritam is it is well formed well formulated well well structured so that is the meaning of the word sanskritam so sanskritam is well formed the language <coughs> is a structured language the language is a well structured one that is what the word sanskritam indicates okay from this slide onwards you have to see so <coughs> you can see we saw in the last class varnamala varnamala is a name of the script devanagari script devanagari is a script in which the language is written devanagari as i said not only sanskritam other languages also uses the script devanagari script and it is called varnamala varna means literally it means letter and mala is garland so the letters form the garland for the language therefore it is called varna mala and another word for varna mala is akshara mala aksharam also means letter 
literally it means in literal sense it is a letter aksharam has got another meaning also that which cannot be destroyed is called aksharam letters the sound the sound is the sound cannot be destroyed the letter the sound is represented in the form of a letter or the letter as its corresponding sound the sound forms the base of the language and it is in the form of a mala the garland to the language therefore akshara mala akshara mala otherwise called varna mala it, it is also it is also indestructible it is another akshara mala another varna mala the letters of the language are called varna mala or akshara mala so now we are going to learn the script devana agri script as i said other languages also uses the script with a difference there's a difference so if you know the hindi or uh, the other language so you will you will you can see the you can observe the difference that is an opinion that those who know hindi they can they can read sanskrit from yes they can read those who have knowledge of hindi or other language which is a devanagari script they can read sanskritam but there is a difference there are differences therefore as a language we have to learn again the devanagari script in the plan in the in learning devanagari script we will see a lot of information a lot of information pertaining to the the letter and its pronunciation how it is pronounced the place of pronunciation a lot of other details also we are going to see which is which is which, which will be very helpful when you when you pronounce the pronounce a letter pronounce a word when you read the sentence now this akshara mala otherwise called a varna mala varna mala it has vowels and consonants first we will see vowels like uh, in uh, english english the vowels are the vowels are not in the not together the five vowels are randomly distributed in 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 english whereas here is when we learn devanagari script first we will learn vowels and then consonants so vowels are separate and consonants are separate so first we will learn vowels and how many vowels are there in sanskrit there are 13 vowels in sanskrit there are 13 and these vowels have got the name swaraha they are called swaraha otherwise called swara varnaha 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 is a letter swara varnaha means vowel vowel letters that is vowels another name is there it is a unique name you can note down achaha achaha also mean vowel vowels achaha so swaraha swaravarnaha achaha all mean the same same thing vowels and these vowels and these vowels are classified into simple vowels and conjunct vowels before we learn the vowels let us know the classification the vowels are classified into simple vowels and conjunct vowels monotongs and diphthongs why it is classified like this that's the reason first uh, we will see simple vowels and then i will tell you the, the reason when we see the conjunct vowels the simple vowels are called samana swaraha 
another name. Swaraha means vowels we have seen. Simple vowels are called in Sanskritam Samana Swaraha. Another name is Amishra, Amishra Swaraha. Simple vowels are called Samana Swaraha. Another name for simple vowel is Amishra Swaraha. Samana Swara or Amishra Swaraha. So what are they? First letter is A. A is the first letter. Except in English, all the languages, except, uh, I mean, in all the Indian languages, let us say like that. In all the Indian languages, you will find the first letter of the language will be A. So the first letter is A. It is pronounced short, A. And the next letter is A. The first letter is the short vowel A. The second one is longer. It is long vowel A. You have to stretch it. Short, long. Short vowel a, uh, it has, it is, it has got one unit of time. We will be seeing later, but uh, still I will explain now. A uh, is the short vowel which takes one unit of time. How do you measure one unit of time? Could be one second, or one unit of time could be the time taken to blink. So it is, it is one unit of time. If you take one second for uttering the short vowel, then you should take two units of time for uttering the long vowel. So, a, a, a is short, a is long vowel. And we'll be seeing later, but since we are learning the vowel, I'll tell one more thing also. This sound a uh, is produced from the throat. It, it is produced from the throat. Kanta. In Sanskritam, the word for throat is Kanta. Kanta. Neela Kanta, we say Lord Shiva. Neela Kanta, blue throat. The one who has blue throat is called Neela Kanta. So a uh, a uh, a uh is short. A ah is long. These are produced from the throat. The sound comes from the throat. So when you pronounce, you see that it is coming from the, th the throat, not just from the, you know, just uh, from the, from the, from the, from the mouth, from the external, uh, you know, the, the, the from the periphery of the mouth. It should come from kanta, throat. Not just opening the mouth and expelling the air. Ha. Not, it is not ha. It is a. Then the next letter is e. E is the next letter. E. It is short. It is a short vowel e. And the long vowel is E. Long vowel is E. E is short vowel, takes one unit of time, and E it takes two units of time. The sound E is produced is produced from the palate. It's produced from the, the palate. And the, your tongue should touch the palate, and the sound is produced. Palate. So, a uh, a uh, from the throat, e e from the palate. Then, u. The short vowel u. The sound is produced by rounding your lips. Without rounding your lips, you cannot produce the sound u. So. You have to round your lips 
So with the help of lips, the sound is produced. Oo. Of course, tongue is there. Oo. This is a short vowel. Oo. Then the long vowel is oo. Stretch it for two units of time. Oo. So a, e, oo. Three short vowels. A, e, oo. Three long vowels. Not only three, some more yet to come. Then the next one is R. It is R. Like the the sound in the word Rishi, Rishi, or Rig Veda, Ritam, Ritu. Let me say that sound R. We'll be seeing in detail later. How it is, uh, how it is pronounced, how, how the sound is produced. Now we can see the form, form of the letter, letter, and to un understand to some extent the sound. R is a short vowel. And the long form is R. The long form is R. So a a i i u u. R, R. So then the next one is L. The next one is L. This is a, a peculiar uh, vowel, not much used in the language. It is there, but not much used. So therefore, therefore, uh, no need to bother about this letter L. So a a i i o o r r l. How many letters are there? So therefore, here two, four, six, eight, nine. Nine letters are there. These nine letters are called simple vowels. They are called simple vowels. Why it is simple? I tell you later. So a a i i o o r r l. They are simple vowels. Then, then the <coughs> then the long vowels. Sorry, then the conjunct vowels. We'll see. Conjunct vowels, otherwise called diphthongs. In Sanskrit, it is called sanyukta swaraha. It is sanyukta swaraha, otherwise called Mishra Swaraha. So I have written in transliteration also. So you can take the support of transliteration when you want to read. Sanyukta Swaraha or Mishra Swaraha. Simple vowels are called Amishra Swaraha, whereas conjunct vowels are called Mishra Swaraha. How many letters are there in the language? I told 13. 13 are there. Among them, nine are simple vowels. A, A, I, I, U, U, R, R, and L. Now, how many will be left? Four. What are they? A. The letter what you see? A. A. It is a long vowel. Remember, A is a long vowel. It doesn't have its short form. Conjunct vowels doesn't have short form. A is a long vowel and short form of A is A. E is a long vowel, short form of E is E. O is there, short form is O. R is there, and short form is R. And what about L? I didn't say, I didn't say anything about L. L is a short vowel. L is a short vowel. It doesn't have long form. There is no L, L, not there. L is a short vowel. It takes one unit of time. L doesn't have its long form. And now, here in conjunct vowels, all the four vowels which are going to come, they are long vowels. They don't have short forms. Therefore, the letter what you see now, A is a long vowel and I, 
These four verbs are the conjunct verbs. Sanyakta Swaraha, otherwise called Mishra Swaraha. Now, why do we classify as simple verbs and conjunct verbs? What, 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 what is the difference? What is the difference between the two? Yeah, see, simple verbs have the same sound. They have the same sound at the beginning of pronunciation at the end of pronunciation. For example, when you say a, uh, a uh, is, as I said, it is produced in the throat, produced from the throat. A, uh, produced from the throat. E, produced from the palate. U, produced by rounding your lips. U. So, its place of pronunciation from the, at the beginning of pronunciation, to the end of pronunciation, it is same. The place of pronunciation remains same. Therefore, they are called simple vowel. Simple vowels. We will see in detail about the place of pronunciation. The place of pronunciation is same throughout the pronunciation of the vowel. They are called simple vowels. Whereas for the conjunct vowels, diphthongs, which are formed by the combination of two vowels, the combination of two vowels, they are, they have, they have two different places of pronunciation. That is, at the beginning, the place of pronunciation is, is one. At the end, at the end of pronunciation, it is different. So the starting place of pronunciation of the vowel and the it has the ending place of pronunciation. It has a, it has a place of pronunciation at the beginning and it has a place of pronunciation at the end. So, so therefore, at the beginning, it has got a place of pronunciation. At the end, it has got a place of pronunciation. So, we say at the beginning, at the end. Therefore, two vowels are involved. Two vowels are involved in pronouncing the conjunct vowels. Therefore, it, it is said it is the combination of two vowels. At the starting place, it has a, it starts it starts with the pronunciation of a vowel, and it ends with the pronunciation of another vowel. Therefore, it is a combination of two verbals. Therefore, it is a combination having two different sounds, one at the beginning and other at the end. Therefore, it is called conjunct verbals. Just to show you the, the combination, what you can see, when you say A, it has the combination of the two verbals A and E. It has a combination of the sound of two vowels, a and e. A, I said, the sound comes from the throat. E, the letter e, it is produced from the palate. Therefore, a, when we say, it is the combination of the two sounds, a and e. It is the same order, a and e. First, the place of pronunciation is a. That is a starting place of pronunciation and the ending place of pronunciation is E. So, A is a combination of A and E. It is very difficult to observe it, but uh, this is how it is. Our uh, Rishis, they have uh, done a wonderful study. So, they have observed this and they are given, given this knowledge. So, there are set of sutras are there. There are a set of sutras which talks which, which talk about this pronunciation and all. So let us understand now that A is the combination of the sound of two different vowels in the order. In this in the order it is given. A and E. 
ah uh, the sound comes from the throat and e from the palate therefore the resultant of the combination of the sounds emerging from the throat and ending with the, the palate is a therefore a is a conjunctive vowel similarly o also o the sound starts the throat and ends with the lips therefore o so that's similarly i and au a i o au these four are called conjunct vowels amishra swaraha okay so four conjunct vowels and nine simple vowels so 9 plus 4 13 vowels vowels are called swaraha or achaha or swaravarnaha now how to write these letter first try to see vowels so first let us see how to write the letter a it's very simple a devanagari script almost all the all the letters in devanagari you will find a vertical stroke will be there a vertical stroke and a stroke at the top that is the t shaped stroke almost all the letters will have except few letters few letters doesn't have this t shaped stroke vertical stroke and one at the top so a is written that is written like this you can see how it is started and how it is how it ends it is difficult for me to write and show so you can see it is written like the number 3 and uh, one t then join these two that is a uh, the short vowel a uh. if you have any difficulty in writing you can let me know i will write and send it send the video through whatsapp it is difficult for me to write on the screen i don't have a touch screen so it's difficult for me to show it now so this is the letter a and short vowel and the long vowel is simple the same short vowel with one more vertical stroke you can see first you can see the the order of uh, the writing 1 2 3 4 5 6 is the the same way you can write one one stroke two another curve stroke then three vertical on horizontal line and four vertical line five vertical line and one at the top this is a a is the, the long vowel long form of the short vowel a so difference is only in one more stroke this is a okay so a a first one is short other one is long and the sound is produced from the throat then the letter e the letter e this is also simple this is in the form of the s the english alphabet s will be there and there is a stroke at the bottom and one horizontal stroke at the top and a small vertical stroke connecting the s and the horizontal stroke this is e okay this is e this is a short vowel the sound is produced from the palate the tongue touches the palate and the sound is produced and the sound is represented in this form which is e then once you know e the long form you write e and put a a stroke at the top a stroke at the top that is e the long form is e so a a e e four bubbles you know now then the letter u the letter u doesn't have a vertical stroke the letter u is, is uh, like the letter 3 with the number 3 number 3 you write and put a horizontal stroke at the top this is u this is put this produced from produced by joining the rounding the lips u this is o short vowel o the long form is very easy the long form of o is as a stroke at the side right side that is a stroke is a o 
So, who the long form of who is who, which has a yeah, stroke at the side. Then the next letter is the this is a bit difficult. So, you can see, first you put the, the, the first you write the alphabet, the English alphabet T. T you write, then on the left side you mark, uh, you put V. Then on the right side, it's, it's like, uh, you know, it has got the stroke B, C and D. So this letter probably I will write and show you and send you the video through WhatsApp, how to write this. This is R. If you can follow the slide, it is good. Otherwise, I will write and send you the, the video through WhatsApp. This is the letter R. Okay, how this letter is produced, the sound is produced. R is produced by, by uh, touching, by, by, by tongue touching the roof of the mouth. The tongue should touch the roof of the mouth. R. That is, uh, it is as though it is folding the mouth. It is folding the mouth and touching the roof. R. That is a slight fold and, and, and a touch of the roof. R. This is R short vowel R. And the long form of R is similar to the short form, but you will find at the right one more stroke. At the right one more stroke is there, that is, you can see the stroke E. The E is only, E stroke is only the difference. You can see in this short form, the last stroke is A, B, C, and D with the D it stops, whereas in the, in the long form, it's almost stroke, it is E. E is the, the E letter E, English letter E is a A, B, C, D, E. That one more stroke is there. So that is the difference between the short R and the long the R. Then the next letter is L. The next letter is L. L is simple. It is uh, the, the number, it looks like the number three. It looks like the number three and uh, a stroke at the bottom and yeah, the T, T stroke, the uh, letter T at the top. This is L. This is a short vowel which is produced by touching the upper part of the lip. By produced by touching the upper part of the uh, the upper part of the teeth by your lip, the upper part of the just above the upper teeth, the tongue is touched and the sound is produced. It is l. Therefore, this is uh, called dental because the sound is produced by the sound is produced by the tongue touching the touching above the lip. Touching above the lip, therefore, this is this uh, sound is called dental. The sound produced from the throat is called guttural. We'll be saying it. The sound produced from the palate is called palatal. The sound produced from the lips is called labial. The, the sound produced by by touching the roof of the mouth. That is called cerebral. That is r and r. They are cerebral. And the uh, the sound l. It is produced by by the tongue touching the upper part of the lip. That is dental. So now we have seen the simple vowels. Nine simple vowels, whose place of pronunciation also we know to some extent. Then how the conjugate vowels are written? It is very simple. A. A is, you can see, one, two, three. Three strokes are there in the letter A. It's a long vowel, A. As I said, it doesn't have short form. It is A. Two units of time, long vowel. And 
Next one, I. I is very simple. First, you write the letter A and one vertical stroke. Sorry, one uh, stroke at the top. That is A. That is I. That is I. Then the letter O. O is simple. You write the letter A, that long vowel A, and one stroke at the top becomes O. It's a long vowel O, conjunct vowel. Then O, I think O is O is not seen. It's missing. I think O is simple. You write O and put one more vertical stroke at the top becomes O. So O and O. O it is missing in the slide. Doesn't matter. You have seen already O. O plus one more vertical stroke. So how many vowels are there now? Thirteen vowels. Nine plus four. Nine short vowels and four long. Nine simple vowels, not short vowels. Sorry. Nine simple vowels and uh, four conjunctive vowels. So nine plus four, thirteen. Then we also see the syllables. Um. You can see the. You can see the letter A with a dot at the top. And the letter A with a colon, the colon to its right. That is pronounced as the letter A with the dot. Dot is called um. It is called um. And the letter, the colon, the letter with the the letter A with the colon is called aha. Um, aha. Um, aha. Generally, in Devanagari script, when they teach, this is also taught as part of the uh, the vowels. But really speaking, it is, it is, it is. They are not included. Only thirteen vowels. The dot at the top of the letter a. It can be applied to any vowel, not only to a. Similarly, the the colon applied to the letter a can be applied to any any vowel. So it need not only be to the letter a. Therefore, therefore they are not considered. Therefore they are not considered part of the vowel. Because uh, to any vowel you can add this. Then you have to consider all the vowels. So therefore uh, this is am aha, which is uh, pr pronounced as am aha. It stands for all the vowels. All the vowels can have. The the dot the dot otherwise called bindu otherwise called anuswara it has got a name the dot has got a name anuswara and the colon has got a name visarga so visarga and anuswara this vowels can have this anuswara and visarga and accordingly it is pronounced how it is pronounced we will see the visarga that is colon and the dot the bindu anuswara they don't have independent pronunciation they always take this take the sound of the bubble bubble along with it comes the anuswara and visarga doesn't have sound of its own it takes the sound of the bubble because the letter a is there therefore the letter a with the dot with the bindu becomes am The letter A with the colon becomes aha. If it is suppose, if it if instead of A, if you put, if you replace it by the letter E, the sound becomes im. The letter E with the dot becomes im. And if it is U, becomes um. Um, U with that. This that uh, the anuswara it doesn't have independent sound. Um, it goes along with this, the the bubble sound. Um. If it is r r plus the bindu, rum. If it is a, the letter a, the conjunct vowel a with the dot, aim. If it is i, aim. 
that aim we say that aim is the bijakshara is a seed mantra of saraswati om aim saraswati namaha that aim comes and if it is with the letter o becomes om that is what om is o with this bindu the anuswara becomes om and o already we know it's a conjunct verbal it is it has the combination of the sound of two verbs a and u to so that that anuswara m sound also is added therefore om and if the letter is au becomes om so therefore that dot otherwise the dot is called bindu otherwise called anuswara it takes the sub, it takes a sound of the vowel so am um, suppose if it is a long vowel a is there what will happen becomes am 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 im im um um then rum rum lum aim aim om om so any to any vowel it can come that therefore uh, this the letter a with the anuswara is just shown is just shown uh, as a as an example as an example so that we can apply extend the same thing to other vowels also that is the idea that is why it is also taught along with the vowels then the then the letter a with the colon you please remember the dot the bindu has got the name anuswara we will be seeing it but you can note down the name anuswara and the colon is called visarga the colon which comes after the letter a is called visarga this anuswara and visarga they cannot come independently they are all they always will come with the vowel only with the vowel because vowels can only be pronounced consonants cannot be pronounced consonant without vowel cannot be pronounced it is vowel only which gives support to the consonant and therefore uh, it can be consonants can be pronounced and here also the anuswara and visarga doesn't have independent pronunciation it is it takes the pronunciation of the vowel okay and now visarga please pay attention the visarga which comes after the letter a the letter a along with the visarga becomes aha it is aha it takes the sound of the vowel a aha suppose if it is a is there then aha it is aha the sound, the vowel sound goes and ends with the visarga also ends with the same vowel sound aha suppose if the if, the, if it is the letter e e he short vowel e it is e plus visarga e with visarga e he not e ha please note this e with the visarga it is e he not e ha visarga doesn't have separate sound therefore we should not say e ha e he e visarga becomes e he if it is long e then e he so aha aha e he e he if the letter is u then uhu uhu when you pronounce uhu your uh, lips which are rounded it remains same and the vowel also pronounced along with the vowel sound u uhu if it is a long u uhu so aha aha ihi ihi uhu uhu then r with the letter r r h r h if it is a long r r h with the l you don't find so don't have to worry about it now if it comes then l h then with the letter a the conjunct vowel a 
ehe it note this ehe it is not eha ehe ehe harehe ehe if it is i aihi if it is o oho oho not oha o the letter the the, the, the conjunctive vowel sound o plus the visarga oho if it is au auhu so therefore this anuswara and visarga comes along with the vowel and take the sound of the vowel so they are not independently used like vowels but they had sound specific they had sound specific to the vowel it vowel along with it it is added so when we read words you will understand further how it is pronounced okay so just to give you an idea of how this anuswara and visarga is pronounced i give i give these examples you will see when we read when we start reading words you will see now the dot on the top of the syllable a the syllable a is only an example it can come uh, with any any verbal but the dot is called anuswaraha the dot is called anuswaraha anuswara takes a sound of the verbal then the column which comes next to the syllable a is called visar visargaha it is called visargaha then we talk about short vowel and long vowel what is the difference the difference only in terms of time the time is measured say by the word matra mat mat matra 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 ha matra is the measure of time measure of time to pronounce the vowel if it is a short vowel then we say one matra if it is a long vowel then two matras in vedic chanting we have three matras also three and more than three also is there in vedic chanting so therefore the classification of vowels based on the time taken to pronounce is short vowel and long vowel so vowels are classified into short vowel and long vowel based on their time based on the time time taken to pronounce short and long this is one way of classification first we saw one way one method one way of classification what is that simple vowels and conjunctive vowels and another way of classification is short vowel and long vowel the first one first classification it is based on it based on the place of pronunciation as simple vowels and conjunctive vowels that one way of classifying the vowels is simple vowel and conjunctive vowel that classification is based on the based on the place of pronunciation then how the same vowels are classified into short vowel and long vowel based on the time time taken to pronounce it short vowel and long vowel now you know 13 vowels are there among them nine vowels are simple vowels and four vowels are conjunct vowels and when i when we saw now just now i i told which which are short which are long so how many short vowels are there how many short vowels we saw the vowels a a e e u u r r l in the in the simple vowel, simple vowels we saw these these letters and conjunct vowels i a i o o if you remember i told they are long vowels so they are they are long vowels therefore how many short vowels will be there five that is the letter a is there and e is there o is there r and l a e o r l these are the five short vowels we say short because a has got its corresponding form a ah, the long vowels are there for this short vowels only for the letter l it is not there 
for the letter l there is no long form so how many short vowels five a e o r l and how many vowels in total 13 therefore 13 minus 5 9 9 will be the long vowels so okay the long vowels part we will see later now this is a, that is a pronunciation help how to pronounce the letter the letter a for those who are difficulty the, the pronunciation help is given the letter a is pronounced as in the word cup bus so to utter a there is a slight tension in the throat so therefore the sound i said i said it comes from the throat therefore this is this letter is called guttural the sound which comes from the throat are called guttural and the letter e the letter e is pr pronounced as in the word inform eat the e e sound and the letter o it is pronounced as in the english word english words look book the o the sound o o is there in uh, when say when we say book look that o that is o and this a e o these are the three basic sounds these are the three basic sounds then r r is a bit uh, difficult to difficult to give a give an equivalent uh, sound but when you say cr crystal that that the r r sound is crystal a river a river is also not uh, correct crystal crystal is a word right word crystal r r that r sound is there when you pronounce the word cr crystal then l l is pronounced as in the words jewelry jewelry i think that word is fine l the l sound is there so it's very difficult to give an uh, exact sound you can give equivalent sound in english okay then after this the long vowels five short vowels are there then how many long vowels nine long vowels because the total number of vowels are 13 13 minus 5 nine. what are they a e u r these four are simple vowels these four are simple vowels then the remaining letters are the conjunct vowels a i o u a i o u these are conjunct vowels they are long vowels they don't have short form and the letter a e u r they are short they are uh, they are simple vowels and simple and long vowels therefore 4 plus 4 8 eight long vowels are there among the eight four are simple vowels and four are conjunct vowels so this classification is based on the time taken to pronounce the letter okay then how it is pronounced pickel vowels and can stop the letter a is pronounced as in the as in the words father far fall and the letter e e is pronounced as in eagle beat and the letter u u is pronounced as in rooster fool and r is pronounced as in the in the word read and a is pronounced as in the word gray gate and i as in the words my fly o as in the words goat road pole how as in down noun loud if you have difficulty in pronouncing then you can take the support of this english word and observe how the sounds are produced so this is with regard to the words so we can stop here then comes the the consonants
confidence part. So we'll see. We will see in the, the next class. So we can stop here. If you have any doubts, you can uh, ask. Yeah. Okay, I'll conclude the class with uh, Shanti Mantra, Purnamada. Then you can ask if you have any doubt. Om Purnamada 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 Chate Purnasya Purnamada Yapur Nameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Dhanyavada. If you have any doubts, you can ask. You can ask. Any doubts? No. No, oh, thank you, sir. No, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.